This video is going to cover a very old chainsaw, just recently donated to the Coaland Transportation Museum in Bangor, Maine, from a Frank Pooler Jr. of Skowhegan, Maine. This is a 1946 Power Machinery Limited Universal Model Chainsaw. This was the first model of chainsaw that Power Machinery made, and they're based in Vancouver, Canada. And it was sold on October 22nd, 1946, sold for $346, which was quite a bit of money back then. Uh, it's a very neat two-stroke chainsaw, very heavy, it's about 36 pounds, and it's a two-position chainsaw. It can operate in this position, up and down, so if you're cutting, you know, wood for the yard, and if you grab it and roll it on its side here, if you would turn the carburetor, because it has a float, you'd actually have to rotate the carburetor, and you could also use it to fell trees or cut them down. Um, and to accommodate this position, that's a neat way this saw works. Like today's saws, traditionally you operate it surely by the throttle. Uh, but this one, you would actually uh, set the throttle back here so the engine would be running. And then you actually use this handle here, which actually goes down into the clutch here. So you would actually operate the clutch of the chain. So you set the machine to run, and then you would operate the saw uh, using a clutch for the chain mechanism here. And why I've got it in my garage is I volu I'm volunteering my time to clean it up for display because it does have quite a bit of grease and oil on it. Uh, it's all aluminum, they're not painted, uh, so it's just the base aluminum. And you can see the bar is kind of a little bit rusty and I'm just well equipped here in the garage. I said, let me take it home, I'll volunteer some time uh, and clean this one up. So I'm going to take this saw and hopefully clean it up. Uh, but it's a very neat saw and hopefully uh, when we're done it'll look at least prettier uh, than as it is right now. Okay, so we're trucking right along with our power machinery saw here. And uh, what I've done is I've taken the fuel cover off and the uh, finger guard, uh, they're over here on the floor, uh, for the little fan for the engine here. It is a two-stroke. So here's the head, the exhaust port, no muffler at all. Now when I said this was a two-position saw, it uses, let me get the flashlight out of here, it uses a little fuel bowl. Uh, let me get on this side because it's easier to see. Um, of course these need to be in an up and down configuration. So if you're using the saw like this, you'd have the carburetor like this. But if you had the saw on its side, you needed to loosen this ring right here. Uh, this ring right here, and it has set screws in it. And then you could actually take and turn the carburetor in the position you needed it to, so the, the, the fuel bowl would be in its up and down configuration. Now in this situation, and I haven't unscrewed it yet, I'm going to take this all the way off because with no fuel line there's nothing else attaching it to the saw and that will enable me hopefully to, what I'm doing here is a cosmetic restoration. Uh, I know you guys are probably, many of the viewers are hoping I'd start it up, but uh, that's not the case. Uh, I'm just doing a cosmetic restoration and so um, there's a gasket, there's an intake screen right there. This is, I haven't taken it off yet, so this is new to me too. You can see it's got a little wire clip ring right there. And as we pull this guy out, uh, you can see that's a bit of the throttle. Uh, if I uh, pull the throttle open, it's not, oh, I see. It's got a little uh, spring there. It's a one-way check valve, so huh. So it only lets air go in. Very cool. But anyway, we're keeping on trucking. We've got some dirty still quite greasy in here so we got to clean all this stuff up but there's a carburetor for the baby and we're going to try to cosmetically pretty it up it was drained of fuel so i bet you, you know to be honest with you it would not take much to get this this unit to run okay continuing on uh we've polished this board this actually comes off uh so we took it off and cleaned it uh next uh, we were i was cleaning off the flywheel and the magneto uh here are the points in the machine uh, but I need to take this off because there are nuts back here that if I'm going to take this little windscreen off I need to get to um, and the only way we do that is to take the flywheel off and this makes it a hundred times easier to get in here and you can see all sorts of crap in here we want to get that out uh, we don't want it lingering in there and corroding anything and you can also see the points um, which are pretty good shape actually I'm, I'm impressed uh, so the, actually the viability of this machine actually running is pretty good because the electronics back here are in uh, top shape all right, continuing on with the cleaning for me, uh, I noticed a problem with this chainsaw. In theory, you control the clutch with this handle here. You set the throttle and you control the clutch. And But what I've noticed is whenever you turn the engine over, uh, the chain moves. 
which means the clutch is currently is currently engaged. So if the engine runs, the, the chain goes in. This is very loose. So I pop the, the cap off this clutch mechanism here, and something inside is broken. I'm, I'm not sure what, because I'm not super great with clutches. But, uh, you know, in terms of trying to... I'll look at it some more, and I'll take some high, you know, some good pictures and stuff, but uh, something's loose, because this is just, you know, idling free. There's a, a loose washer. I hate touching this, because it's so damn greasy. Right up in there, that's just free. And it's just not, something's wrong. Uh, so it's, it's stuck on. So that would prevent this engine from starting, just due to the fact that it would take big muscle to, to turn it over. Uh, this is a press bearing, uh, and the cap fits in it. See, there's a surface for the bearing. Uh, but something in here is broken. Probably why they stopped using the saws. They broke it and said, ah, screw it, or they didn't have parts, or they didn't know what was wrong. But uh, neat part of it here. So I'm going to take another look, take some digital pictures, uh, then clean up the cap and keep on trucking. I still have uh, the oil tank to go, the bar, and uh, the other side, which is uh, greasy. I've, I've hit the greasy part now. This was pretty easy. Um, but I get the greasy part to go. Okay, we're just about done with our saw. Um, what we've done is we've taken the bar off and that essentially consisted of three bolts that are right here. Here's the drive mechanism that connects to the motor. Um, here is the part that uh, we took off. It contains of those three bolts that were right here and they actually live on the other side. Um, and then this here actually uh, bolts to, uh, there's a thread adjustment here. So this is where you adjust your chain tension uh, on your bar and then of course the clutch levers are just levers with little pins and stuff easily to remove. Um, uh, just treating the rust on the bar, I'm not really cleaning it up too much. Um, and then I have the chain right here, not doing much with the chain either. Um, but by taking this all apart obviously I get the rest of the sawdust out of the machine, make sure all the grease is gone uh, and I'm about to start buttoning it up and I'll be cleaning the few remaining parts I have left so I can bolt them on too and I'll be ready to go. Okay, that's it. All put back together again. We taken, I taken the carburetor off, the fuel tank off, this handle mechanism and oiler off, uh, the bar off, uh, taking the gear off, uh, the shield off, the uh, inner flywheel here, uh, the, uh, the magneto slash flywheel right there. And uh, discovered that it was broken, so the clutch for the chain is busted. Everything else seems okay. Uh, while I had the spark plug out, um, I checked the machine, while I had the bar off, I checked the machine for spark. It has none, so the points need to be cleaned or something needs to be done. So there's no hope of this starting anyway, plus the very expensive brass piece of fi you know, fixture in here uh, would need to be repaired. Um, but other than that, she'll be on the museum floor. Uh, this is October 6th. Uh, Sunday might be the 5th. Yeah, it's the 5th. Uh, but it'll be on the museum floor, and we'd like to thank uh, Frank Pooler Jun Jr. Uh, for donating it to the museum, and hopefully uh, it can continue on showing the heritage of lumbering in Maine.